One of the reasons to suspect that children are wired for language is that they do it better than adults. Uh, even though adults are more competent at most things than kids, when it comes to learning a language, children uh, outshine their parents. This is often obvious to immigrants who struggle with the language of their adopted community and their kids acquire it with ease. My mother tells a story that when she was growing up, her, uh, her parents were immigrants from Poland and Moldova who spoke Yiddish, and my mother's first language was Yiddish, but she picked it up so quickly that she started to correct them. Uh, she would say, uh, Daddy, it's not street, it's street. He'd get furious. What, the eggs are teaching the chickens? But the, the eggs do teach the chickens when it comes to language, and kids uh, really do have an advantage uh, over adults reminds us that when it comes to learning language, and uh, I think when it comes to learning a lot of things, parents are kind of overrated that when children pick up language from other kids on the playground, from their peers, they not only do just fine, but they pay preferential attention to what they get from their peers compared to what comes out of their parents' mouths in the case of immigrants, a heavily accented and often error-prone version of the language. Intuitively, a lot of people seem to agree, well, the ability to learn a language must decline when you get older. Maybe there's some change in brain plasticity. Everyone seems to agree with a critical period, as, it, as it's called, or at the very least a sensitive period in uh, childhood for the acquisition of language. On the other hand, even though it seems obvious from everyday life, scientifically, it's not so easy to show that there is a critical period for acquiring language. Sure, kids learn language better than adults, but kids differ in a lot of ways. For one thing, they have an earlier start. Someone who starts learning a language in their 30s is just going to have fewer years of exposure and practice than someone who is at it from birth. Maybe kids are more willing to make mistakes, to try out things. Maybe they are uh, corrected more intensely. There are all kinds of differences between kids and adults other than the plasticity of their brains. And the literature was kind of vague as to when this putative critical period was. Uh, some people said between the ages of zero and five, some say until uh, puberty, some proposed a couple of years after puberty. And that's where Josh Hartshorn, Josh Tenenbaum, two former students of mine, and I uh, entered the uh, scene. Josh Hartshorn had put up, for other reasons, on the internet a language quiz. The quiz was designed to identify your dialect of English. Now, uh, that is, you answered 100 questions and it would tell you, do you speak New England English or Texan or Californian or New York? Now, it's not clear exactly why people would want to take a test to learn this, since they know what kind of English they speak. It's with, where they, wherever they grew up. But for whatever reason, it went viral. And they got uh, two-thirds of a million people filling out this questionnaire many of whom had acquired English as a second language. Well, two-thirds of a million data points, that's a social scientist's dream, and it meant that we could ask the question, when exactly is this critical window for language acquisition, much better than studies that just looked at you know, 25, uh, 50 people, which were just buried in, uh, in noise, in, in just variation from one person to another. But there's another reason why it's difficult to establish the boundaries of when the underlying ability to learn a language can change, and that is that it depends on how long learning takes. So let's say you look at immigrants who start learning English at different ages. Some came to the country when they were five, some when they were 10, some when they were 15, some when they were 20. And let's say you find that the ones who came when they were 20 don't do as well as the ones who came when they were 10. Well, that shows that the 10-year-old brain is better at learning language, right? Wrong. Let's say it takes 10 years to master a language. There's a lot to learn. Uh, so by the time you measure someone, say, in their 20s, the 10-year-old uh, immigrant has been at it for 15 years. The 20-year-old immigrant has only been at it for five years. Moreover, uh, even if you hold constant when you measure them, hypothetically, let's imagine that language uh, learning ability started to decline at, say, 15. Pick a round number. Well, if it and let's say it takes 10 years to really master the ins and outs. Well, if you start at the age of 10, you'll have five years in which your brain is working on all cylinders and another five years in which it's in decline. 
If you start at 15, all of the years of learning will be in the when it's suboptimal. If you start at five, all 10 of those years will be when the brain is going great guns. So you've got to unscramble the egg of how many years it takes to learn a language and how many of those years were uh, during the time at which the brain was working at full capacity, which we don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. So with some mathematical analysis and with the answers to 100 questions, Tenenbaum and Hartshorn and I tried to make sense of this problem. So the questionnaire itself had a variety of tests of normal English competence. For example, can you say she happied the baby, she giggled the baby, she laughed the baby, or she tickled the baby? Well, any uh, English speaker knows it's got to be she tickled the baby, but if you're learning it as a second language, they all make sense and you, none of them may sound better than any of the others. He plays on the soccer team, at the soccer team, in the soccer team, inside the soccer team. Or you see a picture, it was the elephant that the lion bit. And there are two pictures, a lion biting an elephant, an elephant biting a lion. You got to do some pretty good syntactic parsing of that sentence to know who bit whom. Well, with 100 questions like that, we had a whole gradation. We had these two-thirds of a million people. And uh, what we found, uh, to our surprise, was um, it takes an awful long time to master the ins and outs of a language, about 30 years until you hit ceiling, at least on our test. If you look at the age at which an immigrant never learns English as well as a native-born, it's around 12 or so. but that doesn't mean that 12 is the age at which your learning ability starts to decline. Doing some fairly fancy mathematical unscrambling, the best estimate that we came up with was that it, uh, it isn't until 17 that the underlying ability starts to decline. That doesn't mean that a, someone who starts learning a language at the age of 12 will be as good as someone who learns it from birth because they will only have five years before the ability starts to go south. Uh, but to our surprise, even though there is indeed a critical window for learning a language, it lasts an awful long time till you're 17. And to be perfectly honest, we don't know what happens at 17 that is responsible for the change, whether it's a change in your social life, a change in your brain wiring, it's an unanswered question. One thing we do know is that it isn't early childhood, it isn't even puberty, and an extra little hint that it isn't puberty is uh, we capitalized on a way of, a bloodless way of tapping the possible effects of puberty, namely girls undergo it around two years earlier than boys. If puberty was what shut down your brain from language learning ability, then say a 13-year-old boy starting English for the first time would have an advantage over a 13-year-old girl. The girl on average having already uh, begun puberty, the boy only beginning. But not only did we find no advantage to boys, we found an advantage to girls. Part of the well-known overall sex difference that females are better at language than males. So we uh, answered one question, is there a critical window? Yes, we uh, threw up another puzzle, why does it seem so late uh, at the same time? It should also be added though, because this is not going to make sense to people who uh, use their own ears to uh, assess other people's language skill. This was a, a, a screen questionnaire. It was a questionnaire on vocabulary, it was a questionnaire on syntax and semantics, not on phonology accent, pronunciation. There, we have some reason to believe that the critical window might uh, end earlier, but that's not something that we could test in two-thirds of a million people in an online survey.